if Roe is overturned, it will be really challenging personally. I don't know what the future would hold for me, but you know, I'm less worried about me and I'm much more worried about all of the people who I could have helped. That's what keeps me up at night. This is Dr. Sarah Wallet, an OBGYN with Planned Parenthood Ann Arbor. She's one of the many abortion providers across the country facing the possibility that her life's work may soon become a felony. After there was a leaked draft concerning a Supreme Court case that could potentially overturn Roe v. Wade, abortion providers had no choice but to rethink the way they provide care. But Dr. Wallet and Planned Parenthood have been preparing for this moment for the last six years. We visited them in Michigan to see how they handle current restrictions and how they plan to pivot if Roe is overturned. Abortion care is really different than other health care because when you cross state lines, you have to follow really different rules. In the states that I've provided abortion care, there are different waiting periods, anywhere from 24 hours to 72 hours after receiving state required information before a person can actually receive an abortion. Beyond just restrictions that impact patients, there's often trap laws, which are targeted regulations for abortion providers. Things like what size our hallways are and what type of doors we have or lighting, things that don't change how we provide care, but just make it harder because we have to focus our energy on following all of these onerous restrictions. This packet right here is um, a resources packet that we give to a lot of our patients. The first page gives some description about all 24 hour consent that's required by the state of Michigan. Our goal is to make sure that our patients are well informed and know that they have choices in regards to their decision. I think one of the biggest challenges we face is being a Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood aren't the only places that provide abortion in Michigan, but it's often our name that becomes synonymous with abortion. So we tend to deal with a lot of protest activity. Our staff often deal with harassment, getting yelled at, getting things mailed to their homes. That doesn't happen in in other types of healthcare. For us, we kind of have that like startup mentality where you have to scramble all the time and you're always pushing harder and innovating faster, except for we're not a new company and we will kind of never escape that startup um, experience because we will always have, unfortunately, legislation surrounding abortion care. Our daily struggles at Planned Parenthood of Michigan are really similar to other organizations. We struggle with staffing and training just like every other organization. I think what is different than other organizations are our patients that experience their barriers are a lot different. When, when a patient's trying to obtain a root canal or their wisdom teeth removal, there are no significant barriers to that. A few of the main hurdles that our patients currently face, one of them is stigma, the lack of family support, the lack of finances. It is definitely unexpected cost, whether you're financial stable or not. It's not something that you expect to happen and have to pay out of pocket. We know abortion is a pretty expensive. Following all of the restrictions around abortion care is a lot of work. It requires a lot of work for our team on the ground to make sure that we are doing everything that is required of us by law. Michigan is one of 26 states that is likely to ban abortion if Roe v. Wade is overturned. This is due to a 1931 law that states any person who administers an abortion would be guilty of a felony unless it was for the health of the mother. While this law hasn't been enforced since 1973, an overturning of Roe would immediately make abortion in Michigan illegal again. Planned Parenthood, Dr. Wallet, and State Representative Lori Pahutsky have all been working on several solutions to ensure that doesn't happen and that abortion remains legal in the state. In April, Planned Parenthood of Michigan and myself filed a lawsuit against the Office of the Attorney General in Michigan asking the state to review the Constitution and state that the Michigan Constitution actually protects the right to abortion. The three ways that we're fighting uh, abortion criminalization here in Michigan are legislatively with bills like the Reproductive Health Act, in the courts with lawsuits like the one the governor has filed against a number of prosecutors in the state, 
and the one that Planned Parenthood and the ACLU have filed against the Attorney General. And then with uh, this constitutional amendment, which is currently gathering signatures to get on the ballot. Planned Parenthood had also asked for a preliminary injunction, which would basically prevent the law from being enforced while litigation is ongoing. And yesterday that injunction was granted. So as of right now, until that case is concluded, the 1931 law is not going to be enforced. Making sure that access to abortion is maintained here in Michigan is important, one, just because people deserve bodily autonomy. But it's also worth noting there are patients that come to Michigan from surrounding states to access abortion currently. The Reproductive Health Act is also gender neutral because there's you know, knowledge now that it's not just women who need abortions. There are non-binary folks, there are trans men. What we have seen with other, you know, even non-abortion related policies that went into place in states is businesses want to invest in them less. And we've been having a lot of conversations in Michigan about how to bring more people into the state. The easiest way to undo all of the work that we have done with those policies is to implement policies that make it less desirable overall, or even less safe for people to move to our state. Michigan is a purple state, but by that same token, it's certainly going to have some electoral outcomes. Since the leaked draft, more women are following through with their decisions to have an abortion, causing abortion providers to be busier than ever. Even with all their preparation, Planned Parenthood is still adapting to provide care to as many women as they can before abortion may become illegal. We have had to pivot a lot over the last couple of weeks because our demand for abortion has driven up. Our patients are starting to worry that they will be able to get a legal abortion one day and then the next day it would be illegal. So we are working day and night to figure out how we're gonna help all the patients who want and need an abortion. The unfortunate reality is there are some patients that we just aren't going to be able to see. Hi, this is Rachel Vaughn from Planned Parenthood. We're working hard to figure out what we can continue to do for our patients. We know that even if abortion is illegal in Michigan, patients will still need family planning care, they'll still need birth control, they'll still need testing for sexually transmitted infections. In the event that Roe is overturned, our doors will stay open. Our services that we offer might look a little different, we'll have to pivot, but our patients are still going to need the other services that we provide even more than ever. We are launching gender affirming care this year, so we're still gonna be here for our patients. Sometimes I do get exhausted by all of this. It's really hard work, it's emotional, but this is work that I do that I know makes a huge difference in people's lives every day. So coming to work, providing abortions for patients, hearing their stories, knowing how this has impacted their lives for the better keeps me going. Mm -hmm.